Hey, what's up everyone? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this video we are looking at the Robot Damashi, or the Robot Spirit, Extreme Gundam Special Version, or just the Blue Extreme Gundam. It's a Bandai Collector Shop or Web Shop exclusive, hence this type of packaging. It's basically the exact same base mobile suit as the red and yellow and white and orange one that I showed you quite some time ago now, but this one is in blue. Now I have not played the game that this is from, uh, they're both from the same game, so I don't really know technically the differences between the red and the blue. All I know is it's the same figure with different colors and different accessories. So beyond that, it's uh, it's beyond me. It's really cool. I remember when I first was looking at the, um, looking at getting Robot Damashi figures, I saw the Extreme Gundam and I thought it looked cool, so I got it, but I said at the time, man, I wish there was a blue one. I didn't know there was in the game uh, at the time, and I didn't know they were planning on making one, obviously, but they ended up making it, so I'm pretty happy about that. I do wish it came with the wings and stuff, uh, but apparently he doesn't have wings and stuff. He has like a guitar, which I'm not into, but whatever. It's still a really cool figure, so let's take a look at him. He stands about five and a quarter inches tall. He's not perfectly upright right now, but pretty close to five and a quarter inches tall. And he does come with a few accessories, the best of which is this. He comes with a set of display stages for both himself, which is the blue one. Let's put him like this. And you can see the name on there. And then the character, I guess, from the game. I don't know. And then we have the red one for the red guy, which we already have. So that's the Extreme Gundam Type Leos, and this is the Type X or EX for the blue one. So that's really cool. He also comes with a big blaster, which is that gunmetal gray color with the translucent blue parts. We have the kind of shiny green up there, and that's pretty cool looking. I don't think there's any moving parts. This is a... that comes off. Maybe it's supposed to. Maybe it's a silencer. I'm betting it's a silencer, but like I said, haven't played the game. So, still pretty cool. And then we have a little bit of a silver paint job here, and on that front silencer part. That's nice. We have two of his lightsabers, which are blue, and really nice translucent blue. Looks awesome. Nice handles. Handles, of course, come off and can go into his backpack, which I think always looks awesome to have those back there. He has a nice shield with a really nice metallic blue going along the edges. Some different molded colors in there. The cool thing about this is you can unsnap it and then snap it up top, wow, if I can get it in the pegs to make it the smaller version. So if you want it to be small, you can do that. Or if you want it to be big, you can extend it like that. Now you can't hold it the way it comes, so they give you this alternate piece, which has part of his forearm built into it, and then a little snap on there, and that just snaps in like that. Now unfortunately it can't rotate, so that's a bit disappointing, but you can get it onto his arm by just popping this off like that, and popping this on. So there you go, he's got the shield, which looks really good with this figure, I like the design. It is a bummer that it doesn't rotate though, so that kind of stinks, but still it's cool that they included that. And I will post some photos at the end so you guys can see this guy in action, so make sure you stick around for those. And then the last bit of accessories are the hands. Well, we get one of these. Of course we get one of these. That's for holding him onto a display stage. But then we get hands. So he has the fist hands which are on him. He has the jazz hands. Of course we need the jazz hands. There goes one of them. But they're the same, just mirrored. So that's cool. We have trigger finger hands for holding his blaster really nicely sculpted. I love the way they sculpted the manipulators on the uh, Extreme Gundam. Extra detail in there is always nice, and these look great. And then we have the Beam Saber hands, which again, have great sculpted details. So that's pretty cool. Now let's take a look at the figure. The head, I'll just pop it off and show you. Well, that time we popped the neck off. So there's a ball peg that holds the neck in place, and then of course the neck just has the socket there. So that pegs on. I was expecting the head to come off. The neck doesn't usually. There we go. And then we have another ball peg for the head connecting to the neck. So via the neck, we have a double ball peg. So you should be able to pose the head pretty well. It doesn't have too much that's going to get in the way of the articulation. So that shouldn't be too much of an issue. 
The face design is pretty good. My V fin's a little bit crooked. I'm going to try to pop that off and fix it. But he's got the red behind the eyes and then the light blue eyes. Pretty standard look otherwise. And it does have that alternate face on the back of it since it's the same as the red version. But you can't use it, so just ignore that. As far as the shoulders go, we have the butterfly joint that goes like that. There's also a hinge built into there. So we're actually going to get a double hinge for the shoulder. So we have that hinge there, and then we also have that hinge there. So you won't have any trouble posing this guy at all. The shoulder, as you saw, is articulated independently. So that's pretty nice. We have a bicep swivel built in. It's a little stiff, so be careful with that. But the bicep swivel's right there. Full range of motion, it's not going to bump into that, so you won't have any trouble. We have double jointed elbow, which also has the elbow cap on it, so it looks really good and gives you really good range of motion. And then for the wrist, we have a ball hinge. So that will rotate around. If Well, it should rotate around anyway. Mine doesn't seem to want to do it, but it should. You really don't need to, I guess but you'll have that hinge and you should be able to rotate it around. Be careful with that though if it's stuck like mine. And then for the torso we have a nice ab crunch where this part here kind of tucks in on itself. Ignore the red and gray parts moving, we'll get to that in a second. So that part kind of tucks in. You see that motion right there? The back part lifts up and it gives him an ab crunch. It doesn't give him the greatest range of motion but it does work. You're going to get a little bit more range of motion out of the red and gray part just moving on that ball peg. Cool thing about this guy though that most of the robot diamond sheet figures don't have is the lateral movement in the torso. That's between the red and the gray parts. You can move him from side to side that way in addition to the gray just being on that ball peg. The red and the gray have a hinge built in so that's really cool. The skirt flaps all have little ball pegs in them so they can be moved out of the way for posing the legs. The side flaps are pretty limited though, based on the sculpt. Be careful about that. He does have the hinged butt flap. Not all of the robot Damashi figures have that, so that's pretty nice. <coughs> Excuse me. For the hips, I really like this design for the hips. It's better than just the standard ball peg that most figures have. It's actually a swivel and a hinge. So it swivels for going front to back. You get plenty of range of motion, no problem at all. That just pops off, so don't worry. It's just a ball peg. If it pops off, you can just put it back on. And then we have a hinge going side to side. So instead of a ball peg, we have a hinge and a swivel. And I like that design quite a lot. We also have a thigh swivel built in. So really, you're not going to have any trouble posing this guy at all. We have double jointed knees that give him really good range of motion. And the knee piece moves as you move the joint make it look a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. So I do appreciate that. It's always cool when they add extra mechanical features. For the ankle, we have a ball peg for the ankle guard, which allows this to move around. We have, what's up there, a standard ball peg for the top of the ankle. Then we have a hinge for the bottom part of the ankle. The foot is not articulated at all, but you should be able to get most of your posability out of it anyway forward and back no problem at all it's just the ankle rocker that is going to be a little bit limited now i thought there was more to it i remembered there being a better ankle rocker but it doesn't seem to want to go so i don't think it's in there so the ankle rocker could definitely be better but forward and back you won't have any trouble at all let's pop this back in <clears throat> so i'm guessing that pretty much covers it i think we've gone through everything especially since it's basically the same as the other extreme gundam so I will leave it, oh, one thing I did want to mention, he does seem to have kind of an iffy paint job where there is white. Most of the white parts are not painted that well. If you look at the ankle shield, hopefully you can see that. Right around the translucent blue, the paint looks a little bit uh, sloppy, a little chalky, a little lumpy. It's not great. The crotch piece, equally not great. And on the pictures I've seen of other people's, it looks to be the same. So a common issue throughout. So be aware of that before you purchase it. But even with all of those issues, I do think it's probably worth picking up. Because it's still a really cool looking, really well executed figure. So there it is guys. Make sure you hang around for the photos coming up here at the end. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming 
figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.